In this tutorial, you'll learn how to create a Voronoi DOM structure with 2D Voronoi. First, you use Greed and Greed Attractor to distort the Voronoi partition. Greed distortion allows to make thousands of variations of Voronoi patterns. Lastly, we use a patch surface to define the form of DOM structure. Let's take a look. Okay, before I start creating and demonstrating how to create a Voronoi DOM. Uh, let me just start with a brief introduction of Voronoi partition first. Uh, Voronoi is one of the very handy components to create a quick and fascinating diagram or pattern. This divided pattern looks like a, uh, the patterns that you can find in nature. So let me show you with the basic concept of this creation. I'm going to type Voronoi and you probably find yourself with the two different Voronoi type, so Voronoi 3D and Voronoi 2D. So I'm going to use the Voronoi 2D for demonstrate purpose. So I'm going to also the Voronoi component requires you to have points, which will set the basic and the center points. I'm going to type populate 2D, and they'll randomly generate points in the space, and I only need about very few numbers, so very some. I'll give five to start with, and I'll give also seed number, so that I will have some variation in number, uh, variation in the setup points. I'm going to go ahead, connect this population into uh, into points, and I'll set the radius. Oops, radius start from one to ten. Connect one. To radius so you can see um, rate uh, the radius one circles are created around these points and if you increase it you see that these circles increasing equally as soon as they collide into, into each other you see immediately notice the relationship between these points so they try to equally claim themselves a territory or the site if you like and you rotate around you know play with different position of these points and if I increase it so this is better so let me just explain you this so between these two points uh, the partition has been created and the distance between the partition to the points are equal so if I increase the size again you see that now these three cells are colliding each other so which means that this mid vertex is also equally distanced between these three points. So if I increase the number of points, you immediately see that, okay, one in the middle, one in the center, is claiming its own land right in the middle, right in the middle of these five points. And like I said again, the distancing between these two points are equal of that partition wall, and likewise all surrounding neighbors. So that's the uh, basic concept of Voronoi 2D. Like when it comes to 3D, it's no difference. It's just the uh, just turn into a three-dimensional space. Um, so okay, I'm gonna start with showing you uh, the basic concept first. Um, so let's define the area to create that tessellated pattern of Voronoi. Um, so I'm gonna use my favorite. Uh, Tool, uh, shape which is a rectangle I will create domain so construct domain which is always great because uh, you can equally distance thing uh, is X and Y so I'm gonna give somewhere around 30 that goes domain start to end so starting point obviously I want to start minus 30 so let's check the outcome so if you hover over so you see minus 30 to 30 that goes to x and y you see that the square has been set up and you can obviously play with the size i'm going to leave it somewhere around there and then just go to paneling tool tap you can grab one that is surface domain number so that goes to surface that immediately set up a grid which is 10 by 10 I'm gonna give it somewhere around 20 
So that will set become the resolution how how fine it gets, you know, when it comes to when it comes to tessellation again. You will see, like I said again, the Voronoi itself you try to claim its territory between these two points and they're all equal. So what you end up getting is an equally distance, you know, the square uh, square grid. Uh, what we want is we want to give a bit of variation by adding a attractor, which will be um, this case a circle. So, so the circle. What I meant by circle is that I'm gonna divide this circle into uh, into twenty different points. So let, let's give a circle some radius. So as you move along, the circle gets bigger and smaller. I'm gonna give points, I'm gonna drop points along this circle curve. So how do you do that? Is divide a curve. So that curve there, and you can define how many. Again, I'll just give somewhere around 20. That goes count. So now we divided the points 20 times. So these individual points will be, well, will be attractive points and they will attract these points around themselves and try to pull it to the circle or the points on the circle. So okay, what you need is go go under grid utility or grid attractors. You can use you can either use a curve attractor, but this time I'm going to use a point attractor. There you go. So I'm going to use a grid. So that goes to grid, and you have a series of points. There you go. So now the points all move towards these points along the circle. You can increase. That number, and you see that the points in points are acting to these. So the grid points acting to, reacting to those points of the circle. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to turn this thing off for the for the for the purpose of demonstration. You see that that's a bit more likely, and I'm going to go ahead introduce this for a night. And grid goes to points. You have to set the boundaries. We know where the boundaries are, so it goes to rectangle. Okay. So the funny thing is that it hasn't got hasn't done what it's supposed to do. The reason being is because we use a grid, and grid we know the tree structure is slightly different from normal points. So obviously it's been branched into a number of sets. So what you need to do here is you have to flatten it to get a equal distancing here you go so you see that it's a bit more random and organic than just tip of grid just because we distorted it with, with point attraction so if you if you set the magnitude here between 0 0.024 perhaps so I'm going to drag it all the way up to 1.1 .1. so that gives the magnitude of that attractor so if you increase it, obviously it distorts a bit more and you start immediately start seeing the interesting pattern. And more you increase it, it more it gets distorted. And you could again this is defining the segregation and, and the resolution, if you like, of the pixels, individual boxes, right? Cells. And if you increase it or decrease it, obviously it tessellates a lot lesser. Um, so I'm going to leave it somewhere around 20 back again because that's what I like and it's very organic as well. So next move will be we have to go ahead and create a dome shape. Obviously these are all flattened and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use um, patch to um, to make a dome shape in you know, a structure this time. We didn't use that before so it would be nice to learn how to use a patch too. So I'm going to create points. The patch requires a point a number of points or a single point at least. So construct point and I'm gonna I'm gonna give a Z vector and you you know what you need to do, you have to move that. So instead of deconstructing you have to construct it right. So type construct point So that goes geometry, motion, and I want to give somewhere around 10. So that goes there. So you see that point has been set up 
somewhere at 10 you could obviously increase it and patch is very interesting um, so you can patch it now and what it requires is it requires a curve so it is outer line the edge line we know what that is so we know the boundary and just created that flattened shape which is a plane we're going to give a three-dimensional depth which is which requires a point or a point so that goes there so what it does is that it immediately created a a hill you know if it's a landscape and if I move it around you know, it follows that point I'm never gonna touch it but it's gonna get try to get close to it and if you want to give a bit of more curved or smoother curve you'll have to define spans and currently it's set at 20 but I'm gonna give 30 to make it a bit smoother and the rest is flexibility by means that it also whether it's, it's flexible enough to follow that point and trim is that whether it's trim out the shape that it re requires so you can also set a arbitrary shape for the patch which is beauty of using patch and say for instance that I've just defined that shape and using curve I'm going to define that with param and if you Go ahead just use that there you see that the shape has been has been has been patched up obviously in three-dimensional manner so this is a great way of creating a a dome shape or a um, a canopy if you like when when you see that things are uh, you know when you see tensile structure it has got that sort of you know natural curve to it when you if you use a patch so I'm gonna bring that back home to, to, to the boundary so it does its trick I'm going to do it the shape there and what, what I need to do is I'm going to project, project this to onto the surface that I've just created the patch surface uh, before that what I want to also um, show you is how to offset the, um, the Voronoi so it's a bit different you could use offset but that requires a lot of different way going around if you like but the easiest way to offset this is using scale so and what this requires is a center point we know where the center points are one could argue that is all this you know distorted grid point however this time I'm going to show you how to do it properly or I find a new center point you could either use mesh uh, the construct mesh the construct mesh and then use vertices and find average and that's the center point of each individual and that goes to the center points I'm gonna turn up this points and also the attractor point attractor or distorted grid and then you know what geometry you have to offset and the other best thing is we have to give a factor which is not for not point five what I want to do is not point seven nine something like that and you know why it does this a trick uh, so we need to we need to craft it there you go and I'm going to connect that to factor so as you can see and this number represent how close it gets to the original curve so obviously if you set it to one it becomes the exact match and if you drag it down it will increase you know it gets smaller and smaller and smaller so I'm gonna leave it somewhere around 0.7 that's good enough and next we'll be again projecting this onto surface so I'm gonna use a surface a project surface to surface you all you need is a curve which 
that geometry and to prep which is that so it's nicely been projected onto the surface second thing you need is also copy that and paste you need a curve which is the original cell there you go that just define those two so I'm going to turn this patch off because we just use that just to project those curves on the surface and I'm going to say I'm going to turn that off too that's what I've got on the background it should be all turned off so the second thing you need to do is to simply loft these two together somehow. So if you look at that, the data tree, you see that these are all uh, grafted. And likewise, these are all grafted too. So what I want to do, I want to just tidy, tidy up this data tree by flattening it. There. Let's take a look at the tree again, just to match it. These two trees, and yes, it's all matched up. And now we have to craft this again to individually treat the curves. Before you use a lofting tool, so it's all been lofted. And now we just created a DOM structure. Let's give a bit of depth to this. So all you need is using extrude tool and that is direction of Z. That goes to direction and you can so let's instead of using one by default, I'm gonna give a 0.5, make it a bit a, lot, a bit thinner which will be a lot elegant and I'm going to use mesh to give a unify mesh to make it unify mesh to make it all unify and let me just turn these all off too so we just now created a Voronoi DOM that oh, reacts to the point based on the height of that point as well as you can go back to the top view you can further segregate this by increasing the UMV of that grid say 30 and of course you can decrease it by as low as five and of course you can play with your attract, attract curve and the oops that's all very distorted back to 20 and you can also play with the magnitude Okay, um, this is it for today. I hope you enjoyed it and thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.